So welcome to this very special World Winter Day Party Week event of the Universal Peace Federation. It is, again, my name is Heather Bokush, and it is my great honor to be able to chair this first very esteemed panel. Now, the first the topic of the first session, as you can see, is interfaith peace building and crime prevention. And clearly, this is a really, really important topic nowadays in a variety of areas, such as international relations or conflict uh, mediation and criminology. There is widespread recognition that interfaith dialogue and cooperation are absolutely necessary to build social capital and a radius of trust on both a local level and a global level. And so I truly am looking forward to for some uh, related insights from our esteemed panel. It is my very great pleasure to introduce our first panelist to you, as has been referred to by um, Peter Heyer. This is Mr. Jean-Luc Lemayou, who was appointed director of the Division for Policy Analysis and Public Affairs of the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime in 2013. He's a licensed jurist and with field experience in Afghanistan, Myanmar, and elsewhere, and just an all-round really wonderful human being. So, Jean-Luc, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for your kind words. And it's, um, it's just this, um, esteemed colleagues, distinguished participants, and many friends in the room, because indeed we have already worked over several, through several meetings on this topic of interfaith and how we can, as criminologists, I mean, work better together in moving the world uh, jointly uh, towards the expectations we all have as a humanity. Um, I started where Peter left it, I mean, with regard to the uh, General Assembly Resolution, I mean, about 10 years ago, where King Abdullah II of Jordan proposed the World Interfaith Harmony Week. And uh, through this resolution, the United Nations uh, recognized the imperative need for dialogue among different faiths and religions to foster peace, to foster harmony, to foster what bonds us all together, that is humanity. Humanity is essentially respect and love for one another. Love, what some may refer to as nature, and what others may refer to as the creation. As King Abdullah originally put it, humanity everywhere is bound together, not only by mutual interest, but by shared commandments to love God and neighbor, to love the good and neighbor. Now, ever since the creation of the UN Charter 75 years ago in San Francisco, multilateralism has become an essential component for how we, the peoples of this world, work together to find solutions to common threats and challenges that affect us all. Now, in view of the challenges and the challenging times we currently face, working together across all facts with the living is absolutely essential. Far from the dream of a new world order, what we see is unease and uncertainty across the globe, intensified competition amongst major powers, and a perception that we face threats more serious than we have seen in a generation. Persistent conflict, migration, accelerating climate change and natural disasters, scourges of terrorism, and new forms of warfare deriving from technological change and without international governance. Some of you might have been present when I had the honor to um, introduce and to launch the Homicide Report 2019. But do we realize, I mean, that more people are being killed nowadays through homicide than through conflict, interstate conflict or society. And that in continents such as Europe, that females are at very high risk to be killed by the fathers. 
So on that level too, we still have an enormous load of work ahead of us. For weaker peoples to succeed in finding solutions, multilateralism must be networked and inclusive with close cooperation among international, regional organizations, but as well partnerships with business, civil society, parliaments, academia, and even faith-based communities. The Charter of the United Nations points the way in defending universal values and recognizing people's common future. Strengthening multilateralism means strengthening the commitment to achieving the sustainable development goals, which is one of the few successful common agendas which can mobilize us all together. And building towards a world that is safer and more just for future generations. In this context, let me note that my own organization, the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, where we are gathered today, works on preventing and countering crime, including those motivated by intolerance or discrimination, and the role of criminal justice systems within this. This was indeed a key topic of the recent 28th session of the Commission on Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice, in which many of you were present, and will again be a topic in the Crime Congress, which is to be held in Kyoto in April of this year, where we will benefit again from a joint collaboration on addressing crime prevention and criminal justice issues. Now, last year, UNDC proudly became a member of the UN Task Force on Religion and Development, and we do work with other parts of the UN system to find common ways to reinforce the values expressed in the resolutions of the World Interfaith Harmony Week. These values and reiterating these values is crucial to deal with the crisis of multilateralism or the crisis of trust. Trust in authority, trust in institutions, trust in peers and media, trust in justice, trust even towards the United Nations. References, populism, demonstrations are affecting countries from the Middle East to Latin America and the Caribbean and from Europe to Africa and Asia. Our social contract needs to be revisited. Youth embraces politics, but it has little confidence in the traditional political parties. Instead, they are strongly motivated by topical agendas, such as climate change, and of course, Greta Thunberg comes to mind, corruption, inequality, personal freedom. The overarching fear is that we are currently navigating without a compass. All of this have popped up and not always benign, such as populism and right-wing extremism, who offer to the young a sense of future, collectiveness and belonging. The World Interfaith Week is part of the solution and inevitably linked to another concept that brings us all together, which is the Declaration of Human Rights. As a friendly reminder, Article 1 recalls that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. The Genesis which has brought the World Interfaith Week together and the various leaders of the world, the various religions, promoting the culture of peace, tolerance and freedom, that's the message which we really need to have today. By celebrating and accepting our differences, we learn about ourselves. By advocating for harmony within people, we came up with the Universal Declaration on the Right to World Peace in 2016. By observing peaceful coexistence, Communities strive to come together as one well and to build sustainable solutions to live in peace and harmony as the 2030 Development Agenda prescribes. In this special year of 2020, marking the 10th anniversary of the World Interfaith Week and also the 75th, how they say, 75th anniversary of the UN Charter and the 75th anniversary of the Liberation of Auschwitz. We are reminded more than ever how essential it is to respect, celebrate, and find common grounds in the faiths and beliefs of one or another, to rise as one people, as one love, 
against the grief, against the cruelty, and the evil of old age. As beautifully written by the Lebanese American poet and mystic Halil Ibrahim, embodying the marriage between East and West. I love you when you bow in your mosque, kneel in your temple, pray in your church, for you and I are children of one religion, and it is the spirit. How can we ensure that the principles of the UN Charter remain as high today as it was in 1945? 75 years after the signing of the Charter, the United Nations remains at the forefront of protecting human rights and maintaining international peace and security. But to preserve stability, the world demands the sharing of universal values through dialogue. For multilateralism to work in practice and for the adversities in the past not to be repeated, we need stronger partnerships with the feeling of humanity at its core. And these partnerships must go beyond states and intergovernmental bodies to include all of us, civil society, community leaders, private sector, women's organizations, youth, and you all here today, gathered to together at this meeting. Only as such we can make that important contribution to what we humans consist of. A culture of peace can only come about through promoting human values, respect for diversity, and international law, while striving to achieve the 2030 development agenda. Together, we must find a correct navigating system, an ethical compass. The World Interfaith Harmony Week, the reason we are gathered here today, reminds us of that joint commitment. I thank you very much.